Today I'm going to make paranitroaniline, which is an important chemical reagent used in the synthesis of pharmaceuticals and dyes, along with a wide range of other chemicals. I intend to use it to make the dyes azo-violet and para-red, along with a very neat little demo that can only be done using this chemical. To go ahead and get started, I first weighed out the remainder of my acetanilide I made in a previous video, which you can check out if you're interested. The remaining acetanilide came out to 18.6 grams, which was transferred to a beaker along with 20 milliliters of glacial acetic acid. The acetanilide was then dissolved in the acetic acid with the help of a bit of heating, and once it was totally dissolved, I next added 45 milliliters of 98% sulfuric acid, and this was added dropwise using an addition funnel. After about 5 minutes, all of the sulfuric acid had been added, so I removed my beaker and placed it on ice. Above this, I set up another addition funnel, and this one was filled with a nitrating mixture. This specific nitrating mixture contained another 6.5 milliliters of the 98% sulfuric acid, along with 7 milliliters of 99% fuming nitric acid. Fuming nitric acid isn't required for this specific nitration, and instead you can use 10.5 milliliters of the much more inexpensive and safer 68% azeotropic nitric acid. Anyway, just like before, the nitrating mixture is dripped into the beaker containing my acidified acetanilide, and this is done dropwise and under constant stirring. This addition results in a highly exothermic nitration of the acetanilide, which occurs primarily at the para position. Ideally, the reaction mixture here should be kept below 10 degrees Celsius to prevent a runaway nitration. However, it can creep a bit above this without a problem. I would just be sure to keep it below 20 degrees Celsius to prevent any possibility of a catastrophic failure. Looking for a second at the mechanism of this reaction, this is an EAS or electrophilic aromatic substitution, and this is true of the nitration of any aromatic compound. On that note, this is basically the same mechanism that was used to nitrate toluene in an earlier video I did on TNT. I didn't really explain the mechanism much in that video, so if you saw it and you're interested in how it worked, the idea is pretty much the same here. In any case, the first step of this reaction is the formation of the nitronium ion by the action of sulfuric acid on nitric acid. The nitronium ion is a strong electrophile and in the second step will attack the aromatic pi bond, or be attacked depending on how you view electron transfer. This results in an unstable intermediate which is then deprotonated, reforming the carbon-carbon pi bond. Now one thing that's really important here is that depending on the reaction conditions, different carbon positions can be nitrated, and this can result in the formation of what are called isomers, and nitroaniline has three. The problem is that I only really want paranitroaniline, which is why I started with acetanilide and not aniline. This is because when aniline alone is nitrated, the amine group can be very easily protonated under the very strongly acidic conditions. This protonated amine group acts as a meta-director, which will favor the formation of the meta-isomer of nitroaniline rather than the desired para-isomer. This happens specifically because after the electrophilic nitronium ion attacks the pi bond of the ring and attaches itself to the molecule, it stabilizes in something called a sigma complex or a resonant stabilized hybrid, which can be visualized by looking at pi conjugation around the ring. Now, without going into too much detail, because this can get really complicated really fast, the big idea is that the sigma complex with the largest number of stable carbocation intermediates will be favored. The existence of a protonated amine will stabilize both the meta and para positions roughly equally, resulting in a product that is nearly 50% paranitroaniline and 50% metanitroaniline. However, the acetylated amide group acts as a para director and an ortho director rather than a meta director. Since the amide causes too much steric hindrance for ortho substitution to be favorable, the primary product will be our target, paranitroaniline or rather paranitroacetanilide in this case. Anyway, looking back at the reaction, once all of the nitrating mixture has been added, I allowed the mixture to continue reacting for about five minutes and then dumped it out into an ice bath. This immediately precipitated the dense white product paranitroacetanilide. This is then collected by vacuum filtration, rinsed thoroughly with cold water, and then set aside while I start the next step. For the next step of the reaction, I now need to remove the acetyl group from the paranitroacetanilide. This is done by adding the now somewhat dry product to 70% sulfuric acid and heating the mixture under constant stirring until it's completely dissolved. 
This is a simple hydrolysis reaction, and honestly hydrochloric acid could likely work here as well. I've covered this type of reaction several times on this channel already, so I'll try to be quick in explaining what's going on here. Basically, the idea is that hydrolysis reactions rely on the fact that the molecule being hydrolyzed isn't particularly stable. In the case of paranitroacetanilide, it will slowly decompose into paranitroaniline and acetic acid in solution. This happens a lot faster in hot water, and it happens a whole lot faster if you add a strong acid. Paranitroacetanilide is soluble in acidic solution, so this reaction is continued until the reaction mixture completely clears up, which takes about 15 minutes. The acidic paranitroaniline solution is then transferred to a beaker and basified by the slow addition of 15% sodium hydroxide. Due to the probably very excessive amount of acid I used for the hydrolysis, this little basification step took an extremely long time. It was pretty interesting to watch though, as the solubility of paranitroaniline decreases as pH increases. As a result, the solution became increasingly cloudy the more hydroxide I added, until eventually the paranitroaniline all started crashing out. The weirdest part though is when it crashed out, it crashed out as crystals, which I don't believe I've ever seen before. Once the pH was somewhere between 10 and 12, the mixture is allowed to cool in order to allow the crude paranitroaniline to crystallize. The resulting crystals were a dark orange to yellow which seemed to be dependent on the size of the individual crystals. These were then all collected by vacuum filtration before immediately transferring them to a 500 milliliter beaker. Now these crystals of nitroaniline are already fairly pure, but the problem now is that my product still contains a significant amount of the orthonitroaniline byproduct, which can now be removed almost completely by recrystallization in methanol. To that end, I simply dissolved my crude product in a minimal volume of hot methanol and then chilled the mixture to 0 degrees Celsius. This will cause my paranitroaniline to crystallize out, while any other isomers will stay dissolved in the methanol. Here's some footage of the crystallization I showed earlier in the video, and you can feel free to watch this if you're interested. If not, I more than encourage you to skip a few seconds ahead. I next went ahead and again passed these crystals through vacuum filtration to collect them before scraping them into another dish and allowing them to dry overnight. When I came back the next day, I weighed my pure and dry paranitroaniline for a final mass of 12.67 grams, representing a decent 66.6% .6 yield. This is still a lot more than I need though, so it's no big deal. I was also able to crystallize out another 2.66 grams by driving off some excess methanol. This second batch is likely composed mostly of the ortho isomer though, and I'm not really sure what to do with it. As a side note, this is part 3 of a multi-part synthesis that began with para-aminobenzoic acid. If you look at this entire reaction series, my cumulative percent yield from PABA is 37.6%. In any case, I intend to next use this paranitroaniline to make some azo dyes. But in the meantime, there's a pretty cool demo that you can do with it that I'd like to show you really quick. Basically all you need to do is add a few grams of the paranitroaniline to a small ceramic vessel with steep sides, and then saturate it with sulfuric acid. In my case here, that took about 3 grams of paranitroaniline and 1.5 milliliters of sulfuric acid. The ceramic dish is then heated over a flame to catalyze the reaction. After about 30 seconds, the reaction will suddenly begin to pick up before immediately exploding, and this is the result of oxidation and dehydration of paranitroaniline by sulfuric acid. 
Now, what's unique about this reaction here isn't the explosion itself, but rather that the plume of material that's formed holds its shape and structure perfectly. I've heard this reaction called the exploding snake demonstration, and it's one I've wanted to try for quite a long time. I did try this reaction a second time using 5 grams of the paranitroaniline as the reaction was bigger than I expected before, and I wanted to see if I could get a better camera angle this time. Unfortunately, this second attempt just kind of fizzled out and exploded all over my Bunsen burner. It seems that you need your reaction vessel to be an appropriate size for the mass of paranitroaniline, and if the reaction begins to bubble over the sides before the moment it explodes, you'll just get like a weak puffball. I actually need the rest of my paranitroaniline for some upcoming projects, so I decided not to try a third time but I certainly intend to make more of this stuff since it really wasn't as difficult as I imagined, and I kind of want to see how big I can make the exploding snake. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. I hope you found this video interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.